Hi there, Ina again here and today I want to make a new journal and I'm thinking of making something a bit more rustic and maybe suitable for boys. Uh, I will be using uh, this box, it's a shallow uh, writing paper box. I cut it in half and I will be using the, um, the top and the bottom. And um, putting it together like this, it would give me two tiny little journal covers with a nice sturdy spine. Now they are a little bit small. Uh, looking at them, I played around with them a little bit and then I got the idea of maybe um, making one of those accordion journals. Now I could just, um, you know, glue them together and use them like that or I can insert a fifth uh, side and that could connect both pieces together and give me a bit of a longer accordion journal. So I think that's what I'm going for here. Um, for the fifth piece I'm just using another uh, cardboard box but I have to add a second spine so I'm just using my uh, painter's tape put it all together. Now making one of these accordion journals, it's by no means complicated, but it's a little more time consuming than if you just make a normal uh, book type journal. Um, it has a few extra steps you have to take. And the way I will be treating the cardboard to make it look a bit rustic and a little worn, uh, is just a little more time consuming. So now as my piece is all assembled, I am folding the sides over in a way that I get somewhat of a Z shape here. And that should help me to connect those two um, signatures together. Now this looks real wiggly and it's not very clear. So I went ahead and glued it together and now you can see a little better. I have two skinny and two little bigger spines. I went ahead and I covered everything in gesso but now I want to cover it one more time and so I'm using some white tissue paper. It will give me a little bit of texture. It will help me to um, cover the edges a bit and uh, just give it a, gives it all a little more strength. Now because the tissue paper is so thin I'm not being very careful uh, with the edges or the corners. I don't mind to have a little bit of wrinkles here and there. And as you will see, especially the corners, I'm by no means fancy. I'm just folding them over. And so I'm covering the whole side with tissue paper, folding it over, and then f um, covering the other side as well, folding it over again. So um, I really have a little bit of a uh, protection there for all the edges. So it's keeping everything uh, nice together. So now that's all done and it's all dry. And it is time to put some color on it. I choose about four or five different shades of brown on my palette. And I'm using a very stubby uh, hard brush to apply it to uh, my cardboard here. I'm not being too careful. I don't mind to have a few white spots. I just make sure I cover the edges. Uh, I wanted to just to get a little bit of a rustic look. So even though the journal is not very big, the cover is very long. And so I will have to do this whole side and the other side. So I cut my video a little bit here. And as you will see, whoops, it is done. So after that's all dry, I'll apply a little more metallic paint. I choose some copper and some gold. And I just apply it with my finger here and there to give it a little bit of a shine, especially in the corners, pretty randomly, just to make it a little more interesting. And now to help it blend it all together and also give a little protection to the cardboard, I am using some good old brown shoe polish. Um, it, it gives it a nice feel without making it shiny or sticky. 
it protects uh, pages, especially the edges, and it actually smells good. <laughs> well, if you like shoe polish, that is. But actually, the smell will fade after a while. Now, you have to be sure to buff it real well so there is no excess here. So, um, the buffing is nearly done. And now it is time to put a little bit more interest on the cover. For that, I want to use my texture paste. So, I am um, selecting a very simple stencil. And I just apply it to the corners on both of the end pieces. I'm just using the white sheet of paper to protect uh, the rest of the book. All right, there's one. And there's another one. Now this paste. Uh, will need to dry really well. I let it dry um, by itself. Not uh, I did not use my hair dryer to speed it up, and I let it dry for a couple hours, and then I came back and uh, keep working on it. Now at this point, I uh, laid the book in a way that the end was falling off my table. That way, I wasn't disturbing the texture paste, which wasn't dry yet, and I was able to do the the other part right away. And while it's drying, I'm using my black permanent ink to give the edges a bit of a rub and darken them. After the texture paste was all dry, I started painting. I picked a couple of red tones and also the copper and the gold again. I want the, the red to be visible, but I don't want it to be super bright. I want it to look more faded and old and used. So I'm playing around here a bit. I'm putting it down. I'm picking it up again. And um, yeah, I quite like to do this kind of detail work. It's, it's a lot of fun. To play around until you got it just the way you like it. Now um, in this video I will just show you how to do the basic cover and uh, then I will post a second video shortly thereafter where I will show you what I designated this book for. I will show you my signatures, my closure, all the decoration I will add and so on. So here is a finished cover. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you're curious enough uh, to come back for part two so you can see what it will look like. Bye bye.